after more than two decades of rule by Tunisia's revolution has marked its place in history. Tunisia is now a country in chaos. But it didn't happen overnight. And weeks before the world's mainstream media woke up to the story, tweets, photos, and videos began popping up on the internet from Tunisia, warning of trouble to come. A fruit and vegetable seller from Sidi Bouzid had set himself on fire on December 18th, and suddenly, reactions on the Twitterverse were exploding. Following the hashtag Sidi Bouzid, I called up hundreds of photos and videos showing students protesting, police abuses, and sporadic gunfire. As the messages went viral, protests broke out across the world showing solidarity with Tunisia. Tunisia unrest makes waves in Lausanne. Demo Hashtag tomorrow, said the Tunisian Hashtag embassy in London. A flash mob is planned in Berlin on Saturday. The beginning of a revolution was unfolding, and the mainstream media was just beginning to catch up. There are no reporters in Tunisia to tell us what's really happening. About this sooner. Mass media has totally failed. Terrorism equals lots of media coverage. Democratic revolution equals little media coverage. Tunisia's government began hacking into and deleting Facebook accounts. Protesters called for help from hacktivist groups. An unprecedented crackdown on social media. Censorship should get in touch with hacktivists and internet. We really need a local hashtag version of Anonymous in the Arab world. And soon enough, another hashtag appeared across the network. Anonymous. The Tunisian government has decided it wants to restrict the freedoms of their own people. In doing so, the Tunisian government has made itself an enemy of Anonymous. Within a matter of hours, Anonymous launched Operation Tunisia. Paralyzing the president's site, several key ministries, and the stock exchange. The group also shared a cyber war survival guide, sharing cables from WikiLeaks documenting Ben Ali's corruption, tips on running from cops, and proxy sites to access Facebook and Twitter. The government quickly countered with a phishing operation, stealing Facebook and email passwords to spy on activists and obliterate online dissent. But tweets continued to spread, documenting a society's breakdown. The internet is reportedly cut off from city People are creating barricades to protect their neighbors. Students demonstrating in Klebia, 50 miles Injured east. young man shot by police in his back in Kafsa. For a full week, I watched the story unfold online, speaking to activists, using Facebook and Twitter as protests turned bloody. And on January 12th, with Ben Ali's regime on the verge of collapse, Time magazine finally found the story. But the social networks had the best coverage. A new power structure had emerged, and protests had spread to other countries and governments scrambled to buy time. Algeria steps up grain imports. King Abdallah of Jordan sacks government. Plus free food for a year to keep calm. But the anger had already rooted itself inside Arab minds. Through social networks, Egyptians had began drawing connections in late December. Egyptians should copy Tunisia revolt. They're toppling their dictator. That will start a chain reaction in the Arab world. Tunisia solidarity demo on Sunday. Inspired by Tunisia's success, finally, the fear factor had broken. January 25th, a public holiday in Egypt, marking the day in 1952 that saw police back up the Egyptian people's resistance against British occupation. As people organized, they drew upon Tunisia's success, sharing pamphlets on peaceful protesting and self-defense. They made plans to circumvent police barricades, quickly capturing the world's attention. But Mubarak also learned from Tunisia. On January 27, just as President Obama appeared live on YouTube answering questions from the public, Egypt's president took the unprecedented step of shutting down the internet. But he was too late. The World Wide Web was against him. The accounts of police abuse and violence circulated online, including footage that the Associated Press picked up showing what some have called Egypt's Neda moment.
coalition of volunteers, organizations, and activists set up platforms to get the message out. Egyptians, email me if you want to post info on Twitter. To break Elta the block on Twitter, use Twitter. this proxy. Numbers for legal aid and requesting lawyers. Zero one zero. Even journalists in Egypt used their cell phones to send tweets to friends who relayed their messages. Internet still down in Egypt. We'll continue to tweet. Shireen is safe. She just doesn't have internet access. So I'm tweeting on her behalf. To stop any news getting out, the government went after the media. Journalists were detained, and the U.S. government, which had been waffling in its response, turned to Twitter to make their voice heard. We are concerned by the shutdown of Al Jazeera in Egypt and the arrest of its correspondents. Egypt must be open and the reporters released. Thirty minutes later, our journalists were released, showing that even governments can use social media to get things done.